Sing, O barren woman, you who've never born a child, for greater are the children of the desolate than she who has a husband. How in the world do you sing like you have something when you don't? How do you make your life look like you're okay with what God isn't doing? How do you progress to the next season when the season that you're in has absolutely no period and no end to the sentence? Hey everybody, this is Rita Springer. Welcome to the Rita Springer podcast and worship is my weapon. I am trying to encourage um, those of you out there that are needing it on subjects that I try to bring out every week with regard to worship and perhaps songwriting and just uh, life situations that I think we all need encouragement in. And today I, I wanted to just talk about something that I talk about a lot, but I think it needs to be talked about more than once. And, um, and that really is uh, just the, the, the whole subject of barrenness and not just barrenness from the perspective of, you know, um, as a woman being barren, but really barrenness as it is in our spirituality or in our um, seasons with the Lord where we're contending for promise. I do talk about contending for promise a lot because I think it's really important to keep that conversation going because it is so weary. Because when you're contending for something that you have not yet seen, it is a constant need for hope and encouragement and almost water to be thrown on you because it feels like sometimes barrenness can just exist in almost like this desert platform. And I talk about it a lot because I feel like my life in the natural has this uh, resemblance of barrenness that I've really had to fight for and fight through. And it's a constant thing that I deal with and battle with, not barrenness as it relates to having a child, I <laughs> passed that point. Um, but that was part of my story. But it, it is also just fighting for the promise and fighting for the words of the Lord that you have had in your life for decades, perhaps like me, maybe it's decades for you. And you are still being asked by God to contend for this and to contend for and believe for what just seems almost near impossible to, to find. When I was in my early twenties, I um, was reading a lot of scripture, obviously, and just trying to glean whatever the Lord wanted me to glean. And I came to Isaiah 54, which is probably one of the most popular verses on barrenness. And I remember I read that, the, the top of that. Sing, O barren woman, you who've never born a child, for greater are the children of the desolate than she who has a husband. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm in my early 20s. Um, there's no guy prospects, of course, in your early 20s when there's no guy prospects. You feel like the world is caving in on you. And you can't even imagine, for me, couldn't even imagine that I would be in an age bracket like I am now and still contending for some of the same things. But back then, your mind's a little bit more open. You, you're looking at the track of the years to come. Surely God won't, right? And, and then I read this thing of, single, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, for greater are the children are, are the, of the desolate than she who has a husband. Now, I understand uh, prophecy and illustration in Scripture, and I understand that we're using... You know, scripture is using the, um, the imagery of a woman who cannot have children to prophesy something over a region or over a people. Um, and it's almost a, a look down into your soul, get a grip of this and understand that there's something greater in the midst of the barrenness that you're not willing to see because all you can see is what you do not have. And that is the trick of the enemy in our seasons of delay and our seasons of turmoil and our seasons of long suffering and waiting, where we are more focused on the waiting part than we are what God is actually doing while we are waiting. And that is what I think Isaiah 54 does so well. I'm just gonna read some of this here because I, I think that just the, the, 
the structure of Scripture alone is so powerful. Um, and it, the, the title in um, my Bible is The Future of the Glory of Zion. And so it says, Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who never were in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, strengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. And then it talks, it goes on about not suffering shame or disgrace. You're not going to be humiliated. You're going to forget the um, the shame of your, your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. <clears throat> There's a big one for single girls. For your maker is your husband, the Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. My um, difficulty in my early 20s with barrenness and with this particular passage, because I felt like it was my passage. And I wrestled with this passage for a long time. And I think that's good. I think if God gives you a scripture and it's a scripture that you have a hard time with, I think you need to get in there and wrestle with that scripture. Because if you feel like God's really giving you, I mean, we look for like, uh, um, dreamy verses, right? <laughs> to be our scriptures that we journal all the time. And it's like, this was my scripture that, you know, God gave me when I was younger. I think that's great. But sometimes if God gives you a tough scripture that you don't understand, I think wrestling with it to find the meaning for what God is actually saying is, is implicated in your life has been really great for me. And I wrestled with this. I wrestled with this scripture. And the biggest question that I kept asking myself is, how in the world do you sing like you have something when you don't? How do you make your life look like you're okay with what God isn't doing? How do you progress to the next season when the season that you're in has absolutely no period and no end to the sentence? What do you do? How in the world do you try to sing like you have something when you don't? And I wrestled with that for years. I, I don't I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to act like I have something when I when when it is so obvious that I do not house it, that I do not have it. Now, when you're in your early 20s and you don't have marriage and you don't have children, but you're dreaming of all those things and you feel like God's promised them to you. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's like um, you know, you're wanting to do something with your life, but you're just never catching the break. You know, as artists, we we can, we, it can be about a song that never comes or writing songs. I mean, look, this has been my story for the, the length of my life in artistry. And you're always hoping for something, but never always kind of falling short before you get it. <clears throat> and these seasons are just tough seasons. There is something about wrestling with what you do not understand and, and God busting your hip like he did with Jacob in a sense, where now you're walking with the limp in, in memory of the wrestle, but you're also being redefined by what God has said in the midst of the wrestle. If you're going to will, if you're willing to wrestle with the Lord about something, I guarantee you, you will not come out of the wrestle without some clarity. And I encourage you guys to stick with it and just to keep you know, to keep in the lane of, I don't understand why I'm without. Those of you that are women in your prime and you're, you've suffered miscarriage after miscarriage, you're going to understand this. You're going to understand the word barren more than anybody else who's talking barrenness in the spirit. I understood it. I was told early on, look, you've got fibroids. If you want to have a baby, you're going to have to have a baby in the next two years. And at that point, it was just like, great. Let me head down to the local bar, find somebody, just, you know, do a one night stand. And, oh, that's really going to go well for my ministry. And so it was all of these kind of things that doctors would tell me. And, and you'd feel like, okay, the only way to do that is to do is the only way to have a baby and do that right now before it's too late or before this threat on my life is going to um, become in, turn into pandemonium. Uh, this, these are my options. And it's like when you, you, you've run out of options and you're like, I can't do that. That's not who I am. I've got to trust the Lord 
with where I'm at right now. I have to trust the Lord in my barren land and believe that he has said in here, greater are the children of the desolate than she who has a husband. No, I'm just going to be super honest. If the Lord gave us all of the criteria and he said to us, look, this is how it's going to go. Um, you're never going to have that baby. But down the road, you're going to be asked to adopt. This is my story. Down the road, you're going to be asked to adopt. Um, it's going to look like this. That's going to be really hard, but it's going to do this and this and this. Most of us would opt out. We'd opt out. Right away, we'd opt out. Because finding out all the information up front is not where the journey is. Walking the journey out and understanding the voice of God in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the wrestle, that is where the rich soil in the barren land is. And I am, I press you guys so much for this because I can only say it because when you get down the road a couple decades later and you turn around and you have these aha moments when you're like, nope, I never had a baby. Man, my, I mean, if you go into my storage unit, you'll open a box and there's all these journals in there that dictate the children that God told me I would have. And, or, or the, the, the little boy, little girl, whatever that I would give birth to, never did, never did. And those are what I call like lost journals with questions I can't answer. But what I, I, I find greater than that is that when I chose to do it God's way, I got something that so grabbed a hold of my soul. And I look around and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what you were saying. Greater are the children of the desolate than she has a husband. In my 20s, I didn't know I was going to mother artist. I didn't know I would be called a mother by artist. I didn't know that part of my role was to encourage and to parent and to mother. Because back then, that doesn't look as rich as getting what you, you, you believe is your due and getting married and having babies. And doing. I've done greater things than those things that the Lord has, has allowed me to do that have enriched my life because I was willing to wrestle and say yes to the Lord. This is probably going to mean more to women who are in barrenness in the natural and you're wanting a baby, you're believing for a baby. I just want to throw this encouragement out to those of you like that, but I want those of you that are wanting and asking for something in the spirit that resembles barrenness. Perhaps it's something else that is a desire of your heart. Perhaps it's it's struggle with family or job or career or um, or disease or whatever, healing that you're needing, whatever. I want you to hear me when I say this. There is so much in here about barren women. And when I'm reading this scripture, the thing that floors me is that God answers every one of those cries um, to these women and gives them a baby. And those of you that I've talked to that are like, I just don't know why God's not giving me... I'm like, do you realize this is the most encouraging book for parent women who want children in the natural? There are predicaments and things in here that are some of the greatest stories where God is a follow through God and he does it. He does it. In fact, there are stories here with women who wanted babies that were prophesied in the Old Testament to have babies. They had the babies, the babies died, and then God brought the babies back to life. It's insane how God goes overboard in this book, trying to tell you that he sees you, he hears you, and he's going to answer you. I want those that are asking for something in the spirit to understand that that is also a sign for us, that God has a bigger plan, he has a bigger, and he does not, he is not about, he does not put stuff in here that says, sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, great are the children of the desolate than she has a husband. He doesn't give us that kind of hope and encouragement without us having aha moments down the road when we've been willing to walk through the wrestle and turn around and say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I can say that in my life, and I've never given birth naturally to a child. I adopted a baby, and that is a whole different other thing that happened in my heart where God brought that scripture to life. And I, and I just want to really end with this here because I think it's so profound. I remember the day that I was reading the scripture in my wrestle and I was like, how do you do this? Like, God, how do you sing like you have it when you don't? 
And as clear as I've ever heard the Lord, he just said, it's, it's just laying right there in, in the Bible. And I'm like, where? Like, what? How do you sing like you have it when you? Where is the instruction packet? And he just whispered into my ear and he said, you sing. You just sing. And I just sat there for a long time and I thought, wow, I worship breaks the heavy yoke. And it's, the, it's, it's so profound and it's so simple. In Isaiah 54, sing, O barren woman, you who never bore child, for greater are the children of the dust than she who has a husband. What is it about our song that when it rises above our circumstance, it actually can break the heavy yoke and take us out of desertion and put us into um, a flowering desert. And I, I just want to offer that hope to you today as you struggle in your own barrenness, however it looks, whatever, it, whatever the predicaments are, and just remember that there is hope in God and there is hope even in our wrestling with the Lord for the promises that we know He's given us. Mm-hmm.